Hello dear students, welcome back to the lecture series on theory of semigroups. In this uh, uh, video lecture, we will discuss free semigroups and free monoids. So, uh, given the uh, uh, given any set A, we can always construct a semigroup that we call uh, free semigroups. Free semigroup. So let's take uh, any set A, any non-empty set A. Let A be a non-empty set A. Let A be a non-empty set B a non empty set let A be a non empty set now uh, let's note A plus be the set of letters uh, set of letters or we can say set of words uh, finite words we can say in alphabet A whose uh, the, uh, the words the alphabets of those words are from the set A so let's uh, let A plus A plus that's the notation be the set B the set of all finite all finite non empty words non empty words let A be a non empty set and let A plus be the set of all finite non empty words like uh, this A1, A2, AN, where these alphabets of this, this word A1, A2, AN, it's a word or you can say it's a letter where the alphabets of this word they belong to the set A. 1 lesser equal to i lesser equal to n. Okay, so that is, uh, I can say this a plus is actually this set a1, a2, an such that these ais they belong to a for 1 lesser equal to i lesser equal to Now uh, we uh, try to define binary operation on this A plus which makes it a semigroup and that semigroup we call a free, free semigroup. And then we will define it uh, in categorical sense. Uh, what do we mean by a free semigroup? So. Uh, Let's uh, let's define uh, the operation uh, uh, on this uh, a plus. Let's define the operation on a plus. Uh, so uh, that's uh, just the by clubbing these two letters actually. Uh, So a binary operation on A plus is a binary operation on A plus is defined by is uh, defined by juxtaposition. Okay, is defined by this. juxtaposition okay. that is juxtaposition means that is a for all oh, this uh, words uh, for all of these uh, uh, this a1 a2 a n belongs to a plus 
B1, B2, Bm belongs to A plus. We define their product. It's equal to A1, A2, An, B1, B2, B. It's again a finite word. Okay, the product of these two finite words. It's uh, it gives us a new finite word with alphabet with with its alphabets. They belong to E because each A I and B I they are D. So then uh, you can easily verify this. Then one can easily verify it's a semi. You can easily verify the associated property. Then one can easily verify that A plus is is a semi group. Is a? It's a semi group. A plus is a semi group. Okay. A plus is is a semi group. And the set A is called the generating set of the set A is called the set A is called the generating set of A plus. <coughs> the set A is called the generating set of A plus. <coughs> this the semi group a plus the semi group a plus is called is called the free semi group it's called the free semi group okay the semi group a plus is called the free semi group now uh, <coughs> Uh, if we define a map, <coughs> if we define a map, uh, define alpha from A to A plus by A alpha is equal to A. It's a one letter word in A plus. Then this alpha is one of its embedding. Then alpha is embedding. Then alpha is embedding. Okay, this is a, and a standard embedding. Uh, you can see from A to A plus. So here A, A is the alphabet, but here A, this is the word of A plus of uh, one alphabet, one letter word. You can see it's a one letter word, and here it's a letter. A is a letter. It belongs to A because letters are from A, and A plus is the collection of all finite words. So this A is a word. Uh, of single letter, of single. Letter. So this is the one of the property of this A plus. And uh, the second property is uh, if uh, if we take any semi group for any semi group F for any semi group S, let phi from A to S. Let uh, <coughs> phi from A to S uh, be a mapping. Then uh, we can define uh, phi from A to S uh, uh, be uh, be uh, any map uh, be any map be any map. Uh, then we can define. Then now define. Now. <clears throat> define psi from a plus to s by psi of any any word with letters from a let's define this by it should be in s so uh, how do I define it uh, this is there in a I will define it by a1 phi a to phi so on a and 
Right. And you can see this a1 phi is an element of because phi is a map from a to s. So a1 phi is an element of s. a2 phi is an element of s. a n phi they are all elements of s. So it is just the product of n elements of s. So that means it belongs to s. So it's a map. It's a map from a plus to s. And you can easily verify the verify this. This map is well defined. And one more thing that you can verify then. Then you can see this uh, uh, psi is a map from uh, psi is a map from you can see. So let's look at this diagram. Uh, uh, it's uh, here a plus. It's here s. It's here a. So first uh, we have a map alpha. Then uh, <coughs> we have a given any map now. Now phi is any map from a to any other semigroup s. Then uh, we have defined this map psi. You can see this alpha com alpha composition psi. Then alpha psi is equal to phi. This is this is a property. So these are two properties of a plus one is that there is a map from a to a plus which is a, which is embedding which is one one map, and for any semigroup S and for any map phi from a to S we can find a map from a plus to S. We can find this map from a plus to S. Which makes the diagram commute. Diagram commute means alpha composition psi is equal to five. That you can easily verify this. Uh, so let's verify this. Uh, uh, what's alpha? Alpha is a map. From, let's take any let a from a. So a alpha psi. It should be equal to a five. By definition, it's equal to a alpha then psi. What's a alpha? A alpha is a. It's a psi. And what's a psi? You can see here. A psi. If uh, we have a single letter here, then a psi is equal to a phi. It's equal to a phi. So that you can see, a alpha psi is equal to a phi, which means that alpha psi is equal to phi. So this diagram commutes. Okay. Uh, so that's a definition of a free semigroup and. Uh, This is the property. This we call the universal property of free semigroup. If for any other semigroup S, we have a we have a map from phi phi from A to S, then we can find a map from A plus to S. A plus to S. This is yeah. So next uh, we define free monoid. We define free monoid. Now, uh, if we adjoin, if we adjoin one to free semigroup A plus, we obtain free monoid. We obtain free monoid. One is the identity. We adjoin this identity, and uh, we denote, uh, and we denote it by and. And we denote it by a star. So that's what's what's a star actually. A star is equal to a plus adjoint identity one. Okay, a plus one s like s one. But what's this one? One is actually here. One is an identity. But we are we are clubbing the words uh, when we apply the binary operation on these on two words. We are just clubbing these words. So this one. Can be treated as the empty word. The identity one, the identity one of A plus can be treated treated as as the empty word. Empty word. Word with no letter. Then the Then if I if I compose any word with the empty word, it will it will it will give the same word actually. So if I do this a one a two so on a n with empty word, there is no letter in this word. It's equal to a one a two up to a. N. So that's an identity. Empty word is the identity. And when we are joining the that empty word to a plus, we will get an we will get a monoid. Monoid, a semigroup with identity, and that monoid is called a free monoid. 
uh, the particular case of this free semi group is if a is equal to singleton set a then what's a plus a plus is the just the a then a a which we denote by a square then a a a which we denote by a cube and so on is uh, if a is equal to this then a plus is is an infinite is an infinite monogenic semi group Mono genic monogenic semi group and if if cardinality of a is greater than one that means if a a has at least two elements then a plus is non commutative then a plus is non commutative it's not commutative because if we have two letters a b from this a then a b is not equal to b a uh, they are not C because by equality of words we mean the uh, the length should be equal the length is here equal but the corresponding letters should be equal but here A is not equal to B because we have two distinct letters in A at least two distinct letters as the cardinality of A is greater than 1 so in that case uh, this is not commutative this is not commutative So next we give the abstract definition of free semi group. Okay. So now we have an abstract definition of free semi group. Abstract definition of free semi group. <clears throat> this is very important here. And next we will see that this A plus satisfies uh, those properties, the definition of the free semi group. So and we conclude that A plus is actually the free semi group. So, what's that abstract definition of free semi group? Uh, a free semi group uh, give, given a non empty set A, given a non empty set A, given a non empty set A. A free semi group on A, a free semi group on A, a free semi group on A can be defined as follows a free semi group F, a free semi group on A, on A can be defined as follows. follows okay f is a free semi group f is a, that's let's denote semi group on a by f f is a free so that's a, this actually categorical definition of free semi group f is a free semi group on a if it has following properties let me denote this property 1 by f1. f1 is the first property of free semi group. There is a map. There is a map. There is a map alpha from a to f. Not morphism. We cannot uh, talk about morphism here because it is not a semi group. f is a semi group actually. So it is a semi group. First it is a semi group. And there is a map alpha from a to f. f is a semi group. And second property is. If there is any other semi group as having this property that there is a map, say, psi for any semi group, for any, for any semi group S and every map, for any semi group S and every map phi from A to S, there exists a unique morphism. There exists a unique there exists a unique morphism psi from F to S such that the diagram commutes such that such that the diagram this is the diagram 
this is uh, our you can read to set that we can see uh, this is uh, the free semigroup and here is alpha and this is any other semigroup s uh, which is the map uh, the map is here uh, what's the map here it's five then there exists a map from f to f to s that's to by this side that the diagram commutes this diagram that is diagram commutes means the composition alpha psi is equal to 5. So that's the abstract definition of free semigroup. And uh, this abstract definition uh, will see that this semigroup F exists uniquely if it exists. If it exists then it must exist uniquely. Free semigroup, free semigroup if exist, if exist, free semigroup if exists is unique. It's unique actually. So to prove its uniqueness, we will first see that uh, suppose a uh, Suppose A is a non empty set and let F be a free semigroup. A is a non empty set and F is a free semigroup. F is a free semigroup. So that means we have this diagram. We have this map alpha from F. F is a semigroup. Then for any other, then for any, and then uh, for any other semigroup S and any map uh, phi from A to S, there is a unique morphism. But uh, let's take the the other semigroup uh, also as F. We have a map from. Um, this to this. Uh, this is true for any other semigroup. As for any other the second property of a free semigroup, first property there is a map from A to F, and for any semigroup S and for every map phi from A to S, there is a mor there is a morphism psi from F to S. That's for any other semigroup F and for for any other semigroup S and for any other morphism A uh, phi from A to F A to S. So let's replace that semigroup by F because F is already given F is already a given semigroup. Uh, so in particular, this is uh, this is true for uh, the semigroup for F also and the map alpha also because it is true for any semigroup S and any map A from any map uh, phi from A to S. So in particular, it's true for this F also, which is uh, from the first property. First property of the definition of free semigroup. Then it says that uh, there is a unique morphism. Let's uh, denote that by uh, psi. That's psi. Psi that alpha psi is equal to alpha. But one map that always satisfies this property is the identity map on equal to alpha. But it states that the definition of free semigroup states that there should be unique morphism. There should be unique morphism. If F is a semigroup, then there should be unique morphism from F to F. And one of the morphism is identity map. So that means this must be equal to the identity. Okay? Because of the uniqueness. There cannot be any other morphism other than identity map. So this is uh, the uh, this is the one uh, the one of the fact that uh, if we have a unique morphism from F to F commuting this diagram, then that unique morphism must be equal to the identity. So that we are going to use in in this the uniqueness of in proving the uniqueness of free semigroup. So let's assume that we have two free semigroups. So assume assume this uh, assume uh, f dash assume f comma alpha be one of the free semigroup and f dash and come with alpha dash is a map from it be two semigroups be Two free semigroups on A. So we have two free semigroups. Okay. Uh, now uh, this uh, you can see this uh, from this diagram. This is A. This is alpha. Uh, treating F as a free semigroup. It uh, now we can apply the second uh, property of the free semigroup. This treating f as a semigroup then for any map phi from the set a to any semigroup s there is a unique morphism 
So, but here uh, it's given that f dash alpha dash is also a free uh, semigroup on S. So, alpha dash is a map, alpha dash is a map from A to f dash. By treating f as a semigroup, there must exist a unique morphism C psi such that uh, such that alpha psi is equal to alpha dash. Now uh, let's replace the uh, rules of f and f dash. I will uh, consider this diagram now. This is a. Let's uh, write here f dash by treating f dash as free semigroup, and this f as a semigroup now here. There must exist again unique morphism. Uh, let's denote this unique morphism by psi one. There is unique morphism psi two, such that alpha dash psi two is equal to alpha. So we have two diagrams, actually. By treating f as a free semigroup, we have this diagram, and by treating f dash as a semigroup, we have this one diagram. These two diagrams we have. Okay, uh, from these two diagrams, we have the following uh, diagram. We have a following diagram. Uh, and what's that? Uh, that's this diagram. We have following commutative diagram. It's A, it's F, it's F here. This is alpha, this is alpha. And you can see this, uh, uh, you can see this, so we have this following commutative diagram. And this is as a psi 1, psi 2. Psi one, psi two, and you can see because alpha psi one psi two is equal to alpha, which so it can be seen from um, this diagram. Uh, if you want to calculate this alpha psi one psi two, alpha, sorry, it's alpha psi one. What's uh, this uh, here? Alpha psi one is equal to it is here alpha psi one. Sorry. Alpha psi one is equal to alpha dash, and alpha dash psi two is equal to alpha. Now look at this. Alpha psi one, alpha psi one psi two. I want to calculate this. What's alpha psi one? Alpha psi one is alpha dash, so it's alpha dash psi two. And what's alpha dash psi two? Alpha dash psi two is alpha. So that means alpha psi one psi two is equal to alpha. So this diagram commutes. It's a, uh, it's a commutative diagram. We have. But uh, as already mentioned, that since uh, psi one is unique, psi two is unique, uh, so this composition is unique, making this diagram commute. But one map which makes the diagram commute is the identity map on F, which always makes this diagram commute. So that means psi one, psi two must be equal to identity on F. Okay. And next uh, we have one more diagram. Uh, uh, let's write uh, this is f dash, f dash, and this is alpha dash, alpha dash, and this one is a here, and this uh, is here psi two psi one, and you can see this alpha dash psi two psi one is equal to alpha dash. This you can. Do. This is a commutator. But f dash is a free semigroup, so this psi two and psi two, psi two and psi, uh, psi one. This is unique morphism, making this diagram commutes. But identity map map on f dash always makes the diagram commute. So therefore, psi two psi one is equal to identity on f dash. Identity. Yeah? So thus, this means f is isomorphic to f dash. F is isomorphic to f dash. So thus. If a uh, free semigroup on A exists, then it must be unique. It must be unique. Okay? It must be unique. And here uh, I, we have seen that this uh, the A plus, uh, uh, which is a uh, which is uh, which is a set of uh, finite letters, uh, finite words uh, with letters from A. It satisfies first property that there is a map from A to A plus, and it, uh, also we have a second property for any semigroup S and for any map psi from A to S. There is a map uh, from A plus to S. That's phi from A plus to S with some morphism such that this diagram commutes uh, this. Uh, it commutes the following diagram. It commutes this diagram. Uh, 
uh, we have seen this uh, actually a to a plus which is alpha and this is uh, psi to any other semigroup s and there is a map phi psi that alpha phi is equal to psi but this phi is unique uh, what's the definition of phi here a1 a2 so on up to a and it's equal to a1 a1 psi okay a2 psi so on up to a n psi so this is the definition of phi and this phi is unique uh, that's an exercise for you show that this phi is unique so we have seen this uh, the commutative diagram that is already that we have already seen uh, here uh, it has these two properties uh, so So we have seen this is a map uh, which, uh, which maps A onto, onto this one letter word, uh, it's a map and if we have any other semigroup S and any other map Psi from A plus to S then there is a map, uh, then uh, any other map Phi from A to S there is a map Psi from A plus to S such that it commutes this diagram, this one and uh, the uniqueness of Phi that's an exercise, uh, you need to show that this Psi is unique, it exists uniquely actually. So that means A plus a free semigroup and any two free semigroups on a given set A, they are isomorphic. So therefore A plus is a unique free semigroup. This is the unique representation of the free semigroup on a given set A. Thank you.